All right, so <coughs> we're going to pass the section. We go all the way from here. And the idea is to take this member out, take this member out, and this member out, and then draw free bodies for the left part of the truss as well as the right part of the truss. So let's look at the free bodies again. You have <coughs> this part here. <coughs> then we have this joint here. <coughs> and so we got a force here. This is joint A, so there is a force here, 250 pounds. That's joint D, so there is a force here, 500 pounds. Then this is joint E, so again you have force, 500 pounds. Then this is joint C, so you have another force that is 1,000 pounds. Then that's joint B, so that has a force, 500 pounds as well as the force 1250 pounds. Then there was a member here, leave it <coughs> at that point. So I said that we <coughs> break this truss into two parts, one on the left and one on the right. Now then we look at each member one by one. We have a member here which is EB, so I'm going to take that intention and we place the force of both ends as F E B as well as F E B. Now this joint is the same as this joint, so you'll have a force going that direction and the magnitude will be F E B. Then it's the same joint as this, so you're gonna place the force here and that's gonna be F E B. Then you have member EC. We take that also in tension. You get force FEC as well as FEC. So this is going to go here. You'll have a force FEC. You'll have a force FEC. Then <coughs> you still have one more member left, which is DC. So if you put that in tension, you get forces on both ends. That's F DC and F DC. So <coughs> in here, you will have the force F DC and you'll have a force F DC. So <coughs> what we did was we removed the member EB, and in place of that, you placed two forces at joints E and B. You did exact same thing for member EC. You removed the member, and you account for that by putting a force here and a force here. You did the same thing with DC. You removed that member, assumed that to be in tension, and then you placed these two forces. Now, what this gives you is, it gives you two free body diagrams. You have one free body diagram, which is on the left part of the truss. Then you have another free body diagram, which is on the right side of the truss. These are two independent free body diagrams. <coughs> I mean, you could take this by itself, and then you can consider that in equilibrium, and you can solve for these three forces. Or you could take the one on the right part and then you could consider that in equilibrium and find the unknowns. So, I mean, I said this is the <coughs> free body diagram of the left part of the truss. And then this thing here is the free body diagram of the right part of the truss. And we, as I said, we have a choice. I could use either one of them to solve for the unknowns. Now, 
we know the angle here, that's 45. We know this distance here, that's 10 feet. If I look at this one, and we know that if the whole truss is in equilibrium, then any part which is removed will also be in equilibrium. Now, <coughs> we have a choice, I, mean, I can write three equations. So, let's see, if, my, if I sum the moments, bar point C, and set that to zero. <coughs> if you sum the moments about this point, this, this, and this will give zero moment. And this will also give a zero moment. So what you're left with is F E B, that's the force, multiplied by 10. And that's the clockwise moment. So you have this plus 500 and a 10. And that goes to zero. So you get the force F E B as negative 500 pounds was assumed to be in tension. So this is going to be 500 pounds and compression. That's one force. Then if I sum the moments, let's say about point C, that should also be, uh, sorry, uh, B. So if you sum the moments of a point B, all these three will give a zero moment. This one will give a zero moment. You only have this and this. So uh, we get will be F B C times 10 with a negative, and then you get negative F E C cosine 45 